Welcome back to another Pokemon following Friday, where every single Friday morning I post a video going through last week's sales of sealed Pokemon products and Pokemon cards that are currently going down in price. But before we get started, we got to thank today's video sponsor, and that is Arizona TCG. If you guys do have a couple graded cards or a bunch of graded cards you're looking to sell, not sure what to do and you want to get that top dollar, Arizona TCG is perfect for you. You just send them your graded cards and boom, that is it. They're going to take professional scans of your cards, then they're going to post it on their massive weekly eBay auctions. And the best part about it is they charge almost the exact same amount as if you did it yourself on eBay, but they already have 100% positive feedback with over 10,000 cards sold. It's honestly the easiest and best way to sell your graded cards. And with the market being so hot right now with a lot of these graded cards, now might be the perfect time. So definitely check them out. The link is in the description. All right, let's get to it. All right, first product, Darkness of Blaze Booster Box. I mean, this thing is just, it's going down, down. Uh, prices are actually all over the place. 139, 138, 126. I think I've seen this one for 126, uh, 129. I just seen one on eBay sell for like 125. So definitely getting down there. I know a lot of people, you know, collect every single booster box. So now might be the time to pick that one up. Next, XY Breakthrough. This is blowing my mind. I think this is one of the just complete sleeper sets of the XY era. This set is if I'm not mistaken, has 10 beautiful Mewtwo cards. Like I'm talking beautiful, beautiful Mewtwo cards. It's the ultimate Mewtwo set. But yeah, I mean, this thing was $700 a couple months ago. Uh, last sold $615, $599. And I really think this is going to start happening with a lot of other X and Y and maybe even Sun and Moon sets. I mean, Sword and Shield is just so popular right now. Once something gets hot in the market, everybody jumps to it. Everybody loves it. Everybody just buys into the hype. So... I feel like a lot of these things are going to start going down in price in the next couple months, as long as Sword and Shield, you know, stays hot. But I love this set. I would totally pick this set up. I think it's an awesome set. And you mean Houndoom and a Mewtwo as your mascots? Pretty solid. Next, Fates Collide. I love this ETB. It's so beautiful. Got the Mega Alakazam right there. Really nice purple. Every time I see this thing in person, it pops. But look at that. 247, 210. 250 274 so not very many sales i mean there's not a ton of these on the market but i mean i would love to get this etb still i'm actually a really really big alakazam fan so i would love to get this one for my collection all right next we got the 151 booster bundle now i know the secondary market this thing's still like 35 dollars. it has gone down a couple of dollars actually in the last month or two but these are in stock right now at walmart for 28.98 so if you guys are looking to get a bunch of these that is not a bad price. I want to say MSRP is $26.50, or maybe they raised it to $28. I'm not 100% sure. I cannot remember off the top of my head, but love these things, and a lot of people love them. Next, Japanese 151 booster boxes. Now, I've been hearing a lot of people saying, I don't know, it's going to start going up, going to start going up. I think these are going to go down a little bit more. I mean, $85 free shipping with shrink wrap. You know, this dude sold a bunch of these. So someone's getting it for a good deal. Let's see here. 95 free shipping, 110, 98 best offer with $6 in shipping, uh, 77 with no shrink wrap, sealed for 86. Yeah, I think this one with the with shrink wrap one here for 85 99 I checked on it, and I think they sold like 20 of them in the last 24 hours. So really, really hot item, especially if you can get it for below $90, it looks like. But yeah, I heard a bunch of people saying that's going to be over $100 soon. You know, it's going to be over $100 this week. I don't know. It looks like you can still get it. I mean, this is a little bit cheaper than it was last week when we looked on eBay. So not bad. Honestly, I would love to get a bunch of these. It's a super fun set to even open to where $85.99 is really not that bad to just open, you know, chase that Master Ball hunt, which we are going to look at in a little bit. And uh, just a super solid set. And I think it will do pretty solid in the future. All right, we're going to get into some singles. We got a bunch today. So Walking Wake from Temporal Forces. Now, I don't mind Walking Wake. I love Suicune. I mean, it's growing on me a little bit. I just do not love this art. I don't know. It's not bad. It's just not great. I know some people love it. Uh, I mean, just literally a month ago, this thing was $51.29. Last sold price is right, right around 35 bucks. So not bad. I do think it'll get down even a little bit more. Next, Raging Bolt. In my opinion, the best art for the entire set. 
Uh, this thing is still going down. I mean, this was one month ago, $67. And now it is, I mean, last sold 55, 47, 47. So right around 50 bucks. And I can see this being a $40 card, no problem. Gouging Fire, I'm also not the biggest fan of this art. If you go look at the Coridon from Scarlet and Violet base set, special illustration rare, I swear the backgrounds are almost the same. It's like they just, you know, took Coridon out and just put this Pokemon in. So I feel like it's a little lazy. So, I mean, again, one month ago, this thing was right at $50. 36 38 38 So about the same price as Walking Wake. Maybe even a little bit more expensive than Walking Wake. A lot of Temporal Forces cards are going down right now. And here's the king right here, Iron Crown. This one actually had a little bounce back. It was $88, dipped all the way down to $63. And now it's coming back up to around $70. Which, I mean, you can go check a couple videos ago. I called this, I think this is going to be about a $60 to $70 card. Which I feel like is a solid price for this card. Not bad. Uh, Iron Leaves. I do like this art a lot too, but this thing also... I mean, was $48 down to mid-30s. Wow. It's going down really quick. Next, the Mew EX from Paldean Fates is finally, you know, going down a little bit. Was $87 just this last month. Dropped down to a little below $80 and bounced back. So it's going to be right around $80, which honestly, I don't think is a terrible price for this card. I mean, it's got so many... Cool Gen 1 Pokemon. The art is just super, super unique. And it's a shiny. I do think this is one of the best cards in the Scarlet and Violet era. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of more of like the cartoony stuff. I like the more realistic stuff. But this card is beautiful. The blue really, really pops. Every time I see it in person, it just sticks out. But yeah, I mean, it's good. It's going down a little bit. I do not have this card yet. So I'd love to get this for the collection. All right, next we got... The Gardevoir. Now, in my opinion, this is the best art in the entire Paldean Fates set. It is absolutely beautiful. This is one of my wife's favorite Pokemon, and she loves this card. This is a type of card where I hope it drops down, because I would love to get, like, a few copies of this card. Really, really nice card. Just, you know, was $55. Dropped down to about $48. Looks like last sold $47, $46, $47. Someone about 4 at $47. So, I mean, beautiful, beautiful card. I love it. I love that just the shiny Gardevoir and the sparkles and all the other Pokemon in there. To me, it just feels like the best art for sure. All right, next. This is the classic collection card. So these are the cards that come in that big $400 box. I think right now it's for $290. Now, the big three are going down, 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 which is good. Honestly, go look at every single base set reprint that we've gotten for English. This is the best looking Charizard we've gotten for a reprint. I think people are really, really sleeping on this reprint base set. It's such a nice card. Let's see here. Last sold 104, 101, 101. It's right around $100 you can get this card for. Some in the 90s. But I mean, right around $100 for this card is honestly not a bad deal. I feel like it is going to get even a little cheaper right now. Because like I said, everybody wants Sword and Shield. Everybody wants alternate arts. So I'm going to be watching these like a hawk. These are the type of cards I would love to stock up on. If you think about it, if they only come in a box that costs $300, $400, I mean, come on. And it's literally the biggest box Pokemon has ever made. I guarantee you they don't have warehouses full of those things because they are literally massive. So I'm sure they are hard to, you know, print and, you know, produce and everything. So I don't think there's millions and millions of these like ETBs or booster boxes or even ultra premium collections. It's just... So much better than the Celebrations reprint with that ugly, you know, Pikachu stamp, which I don't hate. I just do not like it really at all. And even the hollow foil is better for this. And I mean, all classic collection cards are pretty much going down right now. A lot of the cheaper ones, like the base set starters, those are kind of starting to go up. I've made a couple videos about me buying those. And I noticed those are all kind of going up a buck or two. But I mean, Venusaur, even for Venusaur being around $24, I mean, this is probably going to be like a $15 card. I swear, if these big three starters drop a lot, I am going to stock up on these things. I love them. I mean, I could look at these all day. The Blastoise, beautiful card. Almost below $20. And uh, it's crazy how expensive this Pikachu is. I mean, I do get it. It's the base set. I would love for this thing to drop even more 
Because, I mean, just three months ago, it was $28, and now 12 bucks. So if we can get that card, I want to say around 5 to $8, I would totally love to get, like, you know, four, five, six, maybe even, like, 10 of those. I think they're really, really cool cards. And then let's check. I wanted to check one more. The Mewtwo. That's what I wanted to check. Mewtwo, yeah, right around $5. Like, if this thing drops to $2, $3, I'm going crazy. Next, 151. Now the Charizard is going up in price a tiny bit. I'll put it on the next market Monday. But we got a couple that are going down. The Blastoise was $47 just this last month. Now we can get it 40, 37, 40, 54, 37, 41. So right around that $40 mark. I mean, it's a beautiful card. I mean, the artist is literally Arita. It's I really think everybody's sleeping on these 151 cards. I think these are going to be the next cards to get, you know, hyped up after we get this big uh, Sword and Shield alternate art thing going. Because it's really nice. And they're actually pretty tough to pull. All right, next we got the Venusaur, which beautiful card. Let's see, $40 just this last month now. Dropped down to 35 bucks. Still prices are pretty close to that, you know, $35 to $40 mark. But it's just good to see it start going down a little bit. I mean, I would love to see this card at 30 bucks so I can, you know, get a couple of these. Not bad at all. Alkazam is going down a little bit. You know, was $30, and now we're getting below that $30 mark. Like I said, we're not moving a ton, but it's good to see. I just wanted to get cheaper so that way everybody can get in on it. I still need a bunch of these cards. I do have the Alkazam, though, but beautiful card. All right, next, we got the Japanese 151 Master Ball Reverse Hollows. Now... These things are extremely rare, but we got a massive, massive Japanese reprint, and it just completely destroyed the market on these cards. Now, they are still very, very expensive for just being reverse hollows, but I've been saying it four months, even way before the reprint happened, that a lot of these people were overpaying for these Master Balls. I mean, you can go back and check. I mean, almost $700 in a PSA 10, and now all the way down to 343. I just kept saying, you never know what's going to happen. It's still a very, very new set. And, uh, I mean, Ra was $400 in February. Now it's down to 200 bucks. I think these cards are still going to go down a tiny bit more in the next couple of weeks just because, you know, once this big reprint and everybody gets their boxes and opens them and the market's going to be flooded with these Master Balls. And I know you only get one per box, but I personally know people that are, you know, I know somebody that just opened 10 boxes last night just for fun. So a lot of people are opening. And this is another reason why I don't like recommending buying the Moonbrion right now because it is so hyped up. And I mean, look at this. I've literally heard people say the Pikachu Master Ball in a PSA 10, I think it was like $550. And people are like, that's not a bad buy. Not a bad buy. And I mean, look at it now. They would have lost almost half their money. So that's why I don't like recommending to buy stuff when it's literally the most hyped up popular thing on the planet right now. It's just, you never know. I mean, we could get a new set that blows Evolving Skies out of the water, which seems impossible. But I'm telling you, it can easily, easily happen. So, and there's a lot of sets too that we have that are actually really, really good that could, you know, get hot later on. I mean, people hated Chilling Rain when it came out. Literally hated it, called it Chilling Pain. Even people complained about Evolving Skies, called it Evolving Cries. So, you never really know how the market's going to be and how people are going to be in a year from now. That's why, like I said, it's tough for me to recommend to people to spend $1,500 on a PSA 10 Umbreon. It's just, it's tough. Now, it could easily keep going up. I could be 100% wrong. I'm just going based off of history. And I mean, 99% of the time when something is super hyped, it eventually does, you know, fall off a little bit. Like if I had to guess, I could see Moonbreon. No, this is just my guess. I could see the Moonbreon being back down to like $1,000 in a PSA 10 and maybe 500 raw. Once everything gets back and settles, I could be completely wrong, you know, but just my guess, I just don't like buying stuff at the absolute top of the market. You know, maybe if it was for my collection, which I do need Moonbrion, but I'm patient. So I've been doing this a long time and I'm going to be doing it forever. So, I mean, there's a lot of sets still that I'd love to complete that I'm just, you know, super patient on. Just add it to the list. And once it goes down, I'll buy it. Yeah. And again, too. I mean, even the Gengar, the one of the most popular Master Balls, I mean... $370 in a PSA 10 down to 260. Uh, Ra 
was three, about 275 down to 160. I mean, that's pretty big. I mean, raw was all the way up to, let's see if we can find the highest raw here. 326, no, 350 in October 2023. And boom, down to 160. So, I mean, you're losing over half of your money right there. And that's what happens when you buy into the hype. I know so many people that lost a ton of money on Temporal Forces just buying singles right away. You know, they get into the hype and they think these cards are going to keep going up forever. It almost never does that. Now, I do get Moonbrion is very, very special. I just, I'm very, very cautious. And I'm not super risky when it comes to my investments like that. Collection-wise, I'll be a little bit more dumb with my money because I just want it. But if we're talking investments, I always just buy at the bottom. It's just the safest. I mean, you do miss out sometimes, but when you buy at the bottom, you almost never lose money. I haven't really ever lost money before, so I think it's a little bit smarter. All right, and we even got the Erica's Invitation. Let's see, it was 202 in a PSA 10 in January 2024. Look at that. Down to $86 in a PSA 10. Is that cheaper than Raw? Looks like it's about the same price as the Raw one which, you know, that's what happens with Japanese cards. When your quality is super good, the PSA cards don't really matter. Like, you're not getting a ton of value. So that's why I actually don't mind that the English cards are rough sometimes because then when you do get a PSA 10 or whatever it is, CGC, Beckett, it does feel a little special, you know, because not every card for English is nice. All right, and then last on the list, we are going to check out Celebrations. Now, a lot of these graded cards, you know, just going down in price. Look at the PSA 10 was $224 all the way down to 165. I mean, even Raw's kind of go just goes up and down, up and down. But Raw a year ago was 90 bucks. You know, low price 55, high price 102, average price 72. But I like I said before, I do think the classic collection uh free prints of the base set look better. I really do. This is the stamp just kills it for me. Check out a few others. Got to check out the Gold Star Umbreon. Now, I love Gold Stars. I love a lot of vintage cards. People are just giving me crap that nobody cares about vintage. And just so you know, when you do say that, it automatically tells me how old you are and that you have not been in Pokemon very long at all, if you truly think that. And I guarantee you were not paying attention to the vintage prices during the boom because they were absolutely crazy and made modern look like nothing. Yes, modern was super hot. Couldn't even find it on the shelves. But... I mean, we're talking like boxes from like five grand to 40 grand jumps for vintage, you know, and a lot of people say nobody cares about vintage at all. When 99.9% .9 of all Pokemon cards over $1,500 are vintage, and there are a lot of them. Even the worst gold star PSA 10 is around the same price as a Moonrion, and that's the most popular card in the world right now. So for people to say people don't care. It's just crazy. It just blows my mind. I've been collecting my entire life. There's only two years where I did not collect. When I was 16 and 17. And I still even opened some packs. I just didn't play like the TCG and I didn't get into you know the actual video games those two years. But as soon as I turned 18, I was right back in it full force. So I've been chasing gold stars, crystal cards, shining cards my entire life. So for people to say nobody cares about these, it's just you're very new and you only know people that like modern that's another big thing too a lot of people who hate on vintage just cannot afford vintage like it's just that simple so i totally agree modern is super hot but since i've been in pokemon my whole life i've seen pokemon go up and down so many times like last year japanese so hot english done this year japanese done english hot you never know even during the boom like i said vintage was crazy so everything will have its day. Vintage will have its day again. I guarantee it. But this card, I mean, in the PSA 10, it's only $47. Like, I don't think that's bad. If I could get this for 40 bucks, totally get that because a Gold Star Umbreon in a PSA 10 is a very expensive card, you know? So it's nice that they do these reprints every once in a while. All right, got to check the Shining Magikarp. I'm just curious what the PSA 10 is. Right at 49, looks like it's going up a little bit. It was in the high 30s, so... Again, I mean, I'd love to get this card for 35 40 bucks in a PSA 10. Not bad. Got to check the Blastoise and Venusaur. I mean, these cards are so cheap. It's just kind of crazy. PSA 10, 
And honestly, I do think these cards have potential to do decent down the road. I'm not going to say like crazy or anything, but once Celebration does take off and it becomes a pretty expensive set, you know, I could see this Venusaur being possibly $100 in a PSA 10, just a guess. You know, I could see the Blastoise being 100 and then I could see the Charizard being like 150 200 You never really know. These are reprints of some of the most popular cards in the world. But for 40 bucks, I think it was down to 37 there. And I mean, even the Raw is going up a little bit. So was just a few dollars, which is just crazy. And uh, let's see here. I really do like the Zekrom and Reshram card. So curious on the PSA 10. Wow, $27. So now in my opinion, I would pick this up. I mean, I might even go pick this up after this video. The Zekrom and Reshram. These are some of the coolest cards we've gotten in Pokemon history. I mean, we've never really had full white cards and full black cards before. So these are pretty unique. I mean, this thing tanked hard, $23. So after this video, I'm definitely going to check it out. And if I could find these both in a PSA 10 for around 20 bucks, I'm probably going to get them. Well, all right, that was today's Pokemon Falling Friday. And if you guys do ever see anything moving up or down in the market, please let me know. It really, really helps, especially for these Falling Fridays, because everything in the market right now is going up. So these Falling Fridays are actually getting harder and harder to find. But I kind of like the challenge and just digging through and looking through all these cards. And if you guys do like this content, please make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and please leave a like. I feel like leaving the like honestly helps the most. And then too, if you want to support more, you can now become a member, 99 cents a month. A ton of exclusive content on there we can really connect. And then too, you can also check out my eBay store. And then I just started an Instagram. And again too, I'm going to be saying this constantly. I am going to card party this year. So please let me know down below if anybody's going to card party. I'd love to meet you guys. But all right, I want you guys to have a great day. And if you want to check out my last What If Wednesday, click the link right here. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.